Hello, and welcome to Film Slam Stream's Pulse Film Conversation for Meow or Never. My name is Eric Seiler, and I'm an instructor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the director of Meow or Never, Nija Raj. Nija Raj is joining us from London, England. And hello, Nija, and welcome. Hi, yeah. Eric. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. Oh, you're quite welcome, Nirja. It's so great to have you and to have this film um, for us to enjoy. Uh, it's just so um, uh, uh, interesting uh, seeing the characters um, uh, and their adventures and coming together. Just give us a little bit of background about this. Um, how did you come with the idea um, for this? Um, so Meow Never was conceptualized at um, the National Film Intelligence School, which was where I was doing my master's. Uh, degree and it's like a two-year uh, course and in your second year you work on your graduation film which is Now or Never and um, I wanted to make a film that was like light-hearted and fun and I wanted to make a musical um, I wanted to have cats and dogs in it um, initially the idea stemmed from like just my fears like I'm, I have like a lot of existential fears and so it came from that and it came from my love for like, um, just like lighthearted like plays and like um, music and stuff like that. So I just kind of wanted to combine everything together. And it, I think it's like an amalgamation of all aspects of my personality just, you know, smushed together. And that's how it came about, I would say. Now, um, the film itself, Tell us exactly what you did on the film. Did you do all the animation? Did you con um, concede the script, the, uh, uh, the, um, the audio, the sound that went with it? What exactly did you do? Yeah. Um, so because it was a, a master's degree course, um, the way the school works is like there's there are like eight director students that they bring in and then um, eight sound designers, eight production designers, eight producers. So you kind of have to pitch your idea to them. And um, as a director, like, this is what I want to make. And then you form your team together. So I would say that, um, like, I, I'm the director of the film. I also co-wrote the film with my co-writer. Uh, her name is Vanessa Rose. Um, I also worked on the music with my composer. Her name is Cora Miron. Um, and I also animated, like, I'd say 75 to 80% of it. Um, I did have help from um, three junior animators, like in the year below me, who like, like I'm so glad they took time out of their day to like come help me and um, make this film a reality. Tell us a little more about the animation process. Uh, what did you? Uh, what was that? What was exactly the process like? Um, it was long, like <laughs> everything from start to finish. It took like I would say 14 months. Um, we spent like six months just conceptualizing the story, making the uh, the animatic. The animatic is basically like a, a drawn storyboard, but uh, set to time. Um, so you see how the movie plays out before you even start animating. Um, and animation, uh, we decided to go down the stop motion route, which is, um, it's basically like you use puppets and you animate them in real time, you're moving them. Uh, in front of a camera, like there's no drawing involved really. Um, and that was like, it was intense because you're stuck in like a black, like a dark room. And it's just like you and the puppets and the heat of the light on, on you. And you spend like hours and hours in that room. Um, but in a way it's kind of cathartic as well because you're it's just you and these and these puppets who are essentially the actors of your movie. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was a long process, but I, I enjoyed it. I bet. So the actual animation, um, was it stop motion? Did you use software? Was it just uh, drawings? What, what was the final animation, um, you know, display of um, this film? Yeah, um, so there was a, section in the middle when the when the cat goes into this um hallucinatory like <laughs> phase where 
it's 2D. So 2D animation was used there where we would draw it out uh, digitally. But all the rest of the film, we used stop motion. So we had actual puppets of the cat and the dog and the uh, marshmallows, um, the set. We, I had an amazing production designer. Her name is Anne Klitzer, and she really brought the set to life. Um, yeah, I would say like we we did like a variety of animation in the film. Wow, that that's a, it's an incredible feat of work and it. Uh, took a team and how long did the whole process take? To um, 14, 14 months. 14 months, you said. A little okay. over a year. Yeah. Right, you mentioned that. I'm sorry. Yes, 14 no, months. No, no, no. That's great. But it was like 14 months of your life, uh, almost daily, I'm sure. Uh, For 10 minutes uh, of work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, let's talk about the story itself. Oh, you could have chosen anything to. Uh, to, to do your project on. Um, do you personally have a cat or a dog? Um, did they, or you just love cats and dogs? <laughs> I, this is one of my goals in my life. I, I need to own, like I need to have a cat or a dog. Um, but the thing is so far I've been moving around a lot. Like I've, um, I've I've lived in like Jakarta and Dubai in different parts of India and then now very recently I'm living in London so it just feels like uh, I'm not at that place yet to own a pet uh, to be responsible for one <laughs> but I love them a lot so I find that they creep into a lot of my work um, and uh, yeah I just find them so interesting just to like observe and I think animals teach us a lot about ourselves as well. <laughs> So you never had a pet, um, had a cat or a dog before? I would say I personally never had one, but my my grandfather had one. So I essentially, by proximity, I, I could say that, you know. Um, That's really great research and insight to um, come up with a film like this, but not having to own one, um, <laughs> uh, even um, for research, borrow someone's cat <laughs> just to get some inspiration, but really great concept uh, there. <laughs> I, I do a lot of fostering. So because I can't own one, I'm, I I foster a lot of pets whenever I can, whenever I'm in that particular country. <laughs> okay, that makes sense because it yeah. was just too good of a feel in that film to for you to display without... <laughs> having contact with um, pets, so that's, that's good. So um, why, let's talk about the, the title, Me Meow or Never, why, what is behind that title? Mm. So that was actually part of a song lyric in um, that, that Pucha, the main character, that she sings, but we took it out in the end because it didn't work for that particular song. Um, but it just meant like the urgency of, you know, if of discovering what the meaning of life is, it's 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 now or never. So it's oh, just <laughs> yeah. my own words, yes. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> so, um, cats or dogs? Which do you prefer? I can't pick. <laughs> I can't pick. You can't make me pick. <laughs> I will thank you. <laughs> How about you, Eric? What would you pick, cat or dog? I've had both. I I've had both. Uh, I right now I'm a dog, so I'm more of a dog person now. But I I started off with the cat, so <laughs> lovely. That's amazing. Yeah, exactly. So the cat. Um, uh, why did you choose to tell it from the cat's perspective as to, opposed to having a dog being the dominant character? Hmm. Um, that's a good point. Like, um, when I was initially pitching the story to my tutors and to like, um, other, you know, the other disciplines at the school, I wanted it to come from the dog's perspective. Um, but it felt more like it was a cat's story. It was a cat's journey of discovering that, you know, the meaning of life is essentially you know, friendship and connection and um that ultimately you just don't you you're never going to find like a mathematical formula or equation that can satisfy that that thirst in her um so yeah I would say it was more her story than um than blip the dog's story 
Okay. So yeah. what is your, um, what do you want people to uh, walk away with after viewing this film? What type of message were you trying to send with this? Um, ultimately, that just like the meaning of life is whatever you make it out to be. Really, I just wanted, I just wanted people to have like a laugh, a good time seeing the film, and probably like walk away thinking that you know, just just feeling warm and just realizing that it's it's, um, we all have a lot of questions, but at the end of the day, it's like the process is more important than um, the end goal um, is what I was trying to convey. Uh, well, well, what recommendations do you have for students who are interested in pursuing a career in animation? That's a question that's coming. Oh, okay. Um, like in terms of like, um, I would say practice a lot, draw from observation. I would spend a lot of time in like coffee shops and observing people or or pets or animals and just like drawing and thinking about what their story might be. Um, read a lot, go out and live life, get a, like have adventures. I think that informs who you are as a person and it kind of stems into the kind of um, animation work that you do. Um, but I would say a good a good school, a good university would also help, you know, you to take that profession more seriously. Um, yeah, that would be my advice for someone starting out in animation or art in general. Okay, well, thank you for that question that just came in. Uh, let's, um, uh, to the story itself, the ending of it, I just... <laughs> Uh, who doesn't love um, a nice campfire and marshmallows and so forth and the time of bonding? Was that what you were trying to end with and, um, you know, just leaving people with a good feeling at the end? And was that your intent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and as for the marshmallows, their, their meaning of life is the fire god. So that's kind of why they, they, they love being engulfed by the flames. So there's, <laughs> it could be taken and it's kind of like the dark side of my humor coming out, but also at the end of the day, they're happy with their meaning of life. So I would say, yeah, I wanted to end it on like a lighthearted fun. And tell us some other things in a film that we, people may not see as surface value. You said you have a dark side. I'm sure you added some elements of your personality in there. Tell us a couple of things that, you know, if we were to rewatch this, what we could look out for? Oh, um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of it, like, there are elements of my personality that even I haven't discovered, I think, in my film, that other people notice. Like, when, for example, my classmates, they would watch it. When they were watching it, they said, it, it felt like the dog and the cat were two sides of my personality. Um <laughs> Um, one the dog is like happy go lucky and cheerful and always like seeing like um the silver lining on a cloud on a dark cloud but the cat meanwhile is super ambitious a go-getter will stop at nothing to get what she wants so it's kind of <laughs> it's interesting when other people are telling me like okay I was like wow I did not know that that's how you see me <laughs> Like I, I don't know. I feel like I, I want people to take away from the film like whatever they choose to, like maybe they see elements of themselves in it, and that would be nice as well. I see. That's that's a good way to uh, approach it. Uh, what has the reception been like for this film? What have people said about it? Um, it's done really well. So I, um, this film, uh, we finished it during the pandemic, like in. March 2020 that was when it came out and um and that was when the world was collapsing in on itself and I was like wow I'm gonna graduate I'm not gonna get a job I'm gonna <laughs> I, was, I was having a really tough time but I feel like the film just had a life of its own and it went all around the world it, it it's been like on this amazing festival circuit uh journey it got um, nominated for a BAFTA. It was like, that was one of the highlights for me. Um, and it's just, 
yeah, these characters have done a lot for me as well. And I, I'm just so happy that it's made people from all over the world, like, um, warm inside <laughs> during a hard time. So tell us what a BAFTA is, what type of award that is. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a British uh, award. It's like, um, it's like an Oscar, but for uh, Britain and England. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. You received the nomination for that. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you so that. much. Thank uh, you. Have the awards been announced yet? or? Yes, I did not win. Okay. But it's, okay. <laughs> it's an honor to be nominated just to get in that uh, yeah. category. So your film probably finished in the top of his, uh, one of the top films in your film school. In your, Thank you. Thank I'm, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm, it did too receive that type of acclaim. That's great. So this film is behind you. What's next? What are you going to do for the next 14 months of your life in terms of making a film? <laughs> um, luckily, now I work um, at this production company here in London. It's called Nexus Studios. Um, they, they got me on board after they saw me or never during the pandemic. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm making more new stuff with them. Um, I'm excited for them to come out. My next film comes out March 8th next year. Um, so excited for that. Uh, I can't reveal too much about it yet because <laughs> I have, yeah, they have like clauses and stuff, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the future. Oh, great. So with this production company, what type of work are you actually doing? Um, I'm a film director. So you're, I, direct, you're actually directing. I'm directing, I'm directing, and I'm and I'm script writing as well. Oh, great! That's really that's really great. It's um, it's just wonderful to uh, see the success that can just blossom out of a a student project or student collaborative effort too. And um, you know, uh, the students that are watching that probably want to go into animation or filmmaking or just enjoy films, but you've just given us so much great insight on what it takes to put work out there like that. And hopefully you've inspired some people that are watching as well. Yeah, I hope so too. I'm so glad that you enjoyed my film enough to put it on film film. I'm just, thank you. Well, we certainly did. did. Uh, Nia Jaraj, thank you for joining us and I wish you all the best and continued success. Thank you so much, Eric. I hope you and all the students have a great day ahead. Um, all right. Hope to see you guys again soon. Absolutely. And thank you to our audience for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. If you like more information about upcoming film festivals or events with, Cle with the Cleveland International Film Festival, please visit us at clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you. <laughs>